Hello stuff lovers and fellow pickers. Um, we're here this week with a haul from an estate sale that we went to last weekend. Um, I'm sorry we're not frequently on but I'm working on that and you may be getting more videos soon. Um, very likely as a matter of fact. I hope your picking has been good even through the pandemic and that you've been finding delightful surprises. We went to this garage sale not knowing what to expect uh, because they had talked about furniture a great deal and we don't want any of that. So um, we were quite delighted when we went into their garage to see that they had moved most of the stuff there. Uh, there was a little bit in the house, but really not a lot. And that um, there was a good variety of things, and some of them were vintage or very artful. So it was fun picking through that. We had to wait a little bit um, because they were only allowing a certain amount of people at the same time so that everybody would stay safe, which was fine with us. Um, and what was funny is uh, one of the pickers we know around here, uh, he was there with his wife like three seconds before we came in, they were there. So I could kind of see them, that, that, was, that was a thing because you could see the stuff but you couldn't touch it, you know. But when we first got there, we started looking around a little bit because they hadn't told us yet, you have to wait five minutes. Um, and I'd already, um, I've already seen a clock that I thought would be good for resale, so I picked it up and I just waited outside of the garage, basically, which was fine. But I could see this picker, whose name is Roman, by the way. Roman, if you're watching, hi. It's always nice to see you, but I don't think he's watching. So there you go. Um, he's a totally nice guy. Um, he and his wife, uh, we've bought from him. He has great prices. He's always fun to talk to. But so they were there just ahead of us. And I'm like, oh, no, and we thought, gee, you know, maybe they'll get some really good stuff that we would have gotten. And it's just so funny. By the end of it, when they left, um, they picked up things we wouldn't have picked up. Not that they were bad or, you know, but not necessarily the market we're working for. Um, you know, they had like a little table and a great big urn and other few things and, you know, so, and we managed to get all sorts of other stuff. So we will now share with you what we got and we can talk about more of this later. So, I did get the clock that I first put hands on the minute I walked into the garage. Uh, we will show a picture because we've already sold it. Uh, the clock is an eight day movement clock and it's Swizza, S-W-I-Z-A. Um, it's really well made, vintage, probably 60s, 70s. Um, it was in very good condition and we picked it up maybe for about five dollars and sold it for 40 uh, so very happy with that that even though I didn't know anything about it I was like well it seems to be a very good quality clock and my husband was telling me oh I think we we sold something uh, from that company before I think it's good you know we'll just get it five bucks uh, the person worked with uh, prices pretty pretty well too so that's why we got that much um, but uh, the prices weren't exactly cheap but whatever um, I got this belt uh, she had a lot of belts and I was like maybe I, I'm not seeing something maybe I should get one of these belts and when I saw this one with this little um, kind of dangle I, I thought oh it's almost like jewelry and then I saw on the back that it was stamped Brighton and I know that's a good brand that's something popular and it is stamped Brighton on the leather um, so oh I thought well we never see Brighton here in Montreal anyways that I've never seen that before I know that I think in the 
United States. Uh, that's something people see a little bit more often. Anyways, I bought it for like maybe three bucks or something and I thought, wow, well, what a deal. And, uh, but I looked up belts by Brighton. They don't seem to, hmm. Um, I don't know, some of them might have gone for 16 bucks or whatever. I will put it up. This one's particularly pretty with that almost jewel-like um, dangle, so it'll be a surprise. Um, they had this little uh, frame, which seems to be pewter. Um, people like decorative frames. It's a fairly good size. It was only a couple of bucks. I'll always pick up something like that, especially when we're getting a pile together and it ends up almost costing nothing. Uh, so we'll see about that. Maybe, you know, 12 to 15, something of the kind. So I'm picking in the garage. I see this thing as one of the first things. I'm just making this pile. I'm just picking all of that up going, yeah, that's all fine. Um, you know, neat looking, has a great look, still in the box. Um, it's a clock that projects the, uh, the time on the wall or ceiling, not too sure. Anyways, um, very vintage looking, you know, retro 80s, 70s, something like that. It, it still has a price, the original price on it, which I think is like $59.95 or something. Um, uh, we had money apparently in the 80s. Um, <clears throat> and then um, before anything, uh, I'm, okay, so I'm still picking in the garage. I found this Oleg Cassini, um, and I'll get it out of the box so you can have a better idea. Oh, we have conversation from our cat at the same time. He obviously has something very important to tell you, um, which is like a crystal globe or earth. The cat is pawing at my arm, um, so I'm petting him, and... Um, yeah, I thought very pretty, still in its original box, and we got that for maybe three, five dollars. That's another thing that turns out like it's not worth anything. Well, you know, it's always worth a little something, but I don't know, uh, maybe 15 bucks. We'll see. I'm not going to spend time looking up every single thing when I'm there because I'm going to miss out on some stuff because I'm looking up stuff. So we try and balance it out. You know, if there's something we really don't know about and it's kind of priced high, we'll take a moment and say, OK, well, let's research this because they want 30 bucks for it. Is it worth 30 bucks? If if it is, then, you know, I'm not going to buy it. But if I research it and it's worth 100 maybe we'll talk. But um, yeah, something like that just seemed like a good thing. It's a crystal globe. It's signed on the bottom, Oleg Cassini, but mm, so whatever. Uh, so I'm still in the garage digging through this. My husband goes inside and has a quick look. Um, he was like, yeah, there isn't too much, you know. So I said, okay, my turn now. I went inside and brought back a bunch of stuff. Because, <laughs> you know, sometimes we're looking for different things. And, and some of the stuff was not necessarily that obvious. Uh, on a kitchen counter, I picked this up, which seems to be like a grappa um, bottle, perhaps. It's all glass, and I loved that it had a glass stopper, uh, which makes it kind of fun and refined. So we shall see. I, I really don't know what that's going to be, but it's got to be worth more than the three bucks I paid for it. Things like that. Sometimes I will let you know that we pick up and uh, we don't know exactly how much it's going to make or if it's something that's going to be a great seller. But to me, I don't know how it is for you, but to me, that is part of the excitement. Getting some things that you don't just have a price guide, you look it up, it's $25, you paid $3, you're gonna make that much, and you know. It's fine to have some stuff like that so that you you can progress and and do well financially, but it's awfully fun to have things where you're going, I know I'm gonna make a profit, but how canny was I? How rare is this or 
you know, how do other people see this? And that's that can be what's fun. This is a nice Costa Boda piece of art glass, if you will. It's supposed to have a little glass stopper and to make kind of like a bottle, although it's mostly decorative, as you can see. It is signed. And it's signed by the artist as well. Give me a second, I'm just going to see again. The name is Lindstrand. Lindstrand. So when I saw that the stopper was missing, I said to the lady, the stopper's missing, but I'd still be interested in it. And she said, how much you want to pay? And I said, $3. And she said, that's fine. I thought for that price, someone might still want it because it's a collectible piece and it just looks lovely like that you know, kind of. So there. Um, I picked this up in a box under a table because it said made, said made in France. It's got a nice riveted wooden handle. Uh, might make a few dollars. This was in the dining room and I thought, oh yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna get this. Um, because it's elegant, um, it's a decanter, and it's stamped Royal Selinger, S-E-L-A-N-G-O-R, pewter, um, but I love that it's this polished pewter and it has the appearance of liquid silver. Um, I've looked up the brand and it seems some of their decanters go for like a hundred dollars, but there's no exact comp, so it's worth more than the five bucks I paid for it. This was on the shelf in the dining room area as well, and uh, it's a glass globe with a um, place here for you to string a, something through and, and have it uh, suspended in your window probably sort of a sun catcher but these specific ones are called tree of life because if you look in the middle it has the appearance almost of a tree trunk with some branches reaching out to this foliage um, and it's by tree enchantments i think no life enchantments not even kitris. oh it's kitris glass and um, yeah, so these particular ones, glass orbs that have that tree of life can go for like 25 to $30. So again, I paid a few dollars for it and thought, ah, yes, I've sold glass orbs before and have done okay with them. Like, you know, 15 to $20 maybe on some smaller ones that are just one color. I'm going to try and put this in a place where it won't get destroyed. Um, so, but I've never had a Tree of Life one. That's going to be fun to see how that does. This is uh, one of those. It's um, cloisonné. Uh, so basically, mm, enamel on porcelain, I think, and brass. Um, little, uh, I can only think of the bird's name in French. Uh, wait, it's a hummingbird, which in French is a colibri. And you can put it in your Christmas tree or anywhere that you feel good about. Uh, that too was just like a buck or two. And the person whose estate it was, uh, was a well, flower arranger, and I think she sold uh, flower arranging stuff. There were tons of ribbons and things like that, but they're all... I really wouldn't know how to sell that. It, it's just like, um, sort of, you know, they're not silk ribbons or anything. So I was like, okay, somebody else who needs this can get that. Uh, but she had a lot of flower frogs which you would use to um, arrange the flowers and, and hold them in place, basically, as some of you may know. And she had different um, sizes and shapes of them. Some of them still in boxes. These are not as old, 
but this one I would think is a little older. And um, the seller said five bucks for everything. Some people collect these. Sometimes you can do like a, a little lot of these will get you maybe 25 bucks. So why not that or something else, you know? Why not? There was also this duck. <laughs> I don't know. I guess he's a duck. Uh, he's got glass eyes and he's handmade. Um, I think that's kind of charming. It's not old, obviously, but <clears throat> and it is signed, but it's signed with like a local artist's name or something. It doesn't matter. I think it's mostly I'm I'm betting more on the fact that it's a charming thing and someone who collects and likes to display wooden handmade birds may want this. Um, I don't know. I can't remember how much I paid for it. We bundled it with something else. Um, but you know, it may have been something like seven bucks or something like that. <clears throat> so hoping that we can get upwards of 20. Uh, we will see. Interesting thing to try. Then there was this in the box. Headphones. They are orthodynamic headphones. HP3 Yamaha. And um, so, you know, we were making a little piles. We, we tossed it in there. I'm not sure how much that would go for. I imagine 30, maybe a little more, 30 to 50, maybe more towards the 50. Uh, we always like picking um, electronics, especially if they're a little older or a little rarer. This is a Normark knife. <clears throat> My husband has is the person with more expertise with the knives, um, you know, some video games, some um, obviously older electronics, musical instruments, uh, all sorts of things like that. So um, he saw that and thought, nah, this is a good one. And what is good about this is that, well, obviously it comes with this beautiful um, sheath. And um, it is a filet knife and we have sold it already uh, for $70 because, or 65 maybe even, <laughs> because it is a special edition. It's a black medallion edition and that is worth more. Normally they would go for about maybe 30. So we were really happy with that as well. I think maybe he paid 15. So that was a lot of fun. This is something we've sold before. And Roman's wife, the, the picker and his wife who were there, she was pointing it out to him. And I'm like, no, don't take that. Um, but really, it's, it's not worth very much. But it's just because I know it sells because we sold it. It's the um, empty cognac bottle um, as a lantern. And um, it's actually made of resin, this part. And it was just a few bucks to, I think it, we probably get like 15 to 20 bucks on it. Perfectly fine. And now for the pièce de résistance. Some of you will know that this is a hat block that milliners of yore used to um, uh, use for making their hats. And they would put the felt, whatever they needed to put on there and um, apply it to that so that it would take that shape and they would mold whatever they needed to on that. I have seen these once in a while referred to by experts we see on television and like British antique shows or something like that, but I've never seen one in the flesh. Um, so I was pretty excited because I love to sell antiques that really speak of their time. This is not something usually that, that people will use nowadays uh, in making hats. It's, it really 
speaks of the life of someone back then, their occupation, how they needed to go about their day, and how they crafted things. And so I think that's important in a way. And uh, the, the size of the hat is stamped here, uh, 21 and a half. Um, here you have red bands on this hat block or hat mold. Uh, you have um, hat pins that have formed, I think, a certain pattern. Uh, this is how it was made at the bottom. And it looks like it's been repaired to me here. All very charming. Um, so this was under a hat. The gentleman removed the hat because he was interested in buying it. So I just grabbed this thing and went, oh, I want this. Um, and asked the lady how much she wanted for it. And she's like, oh, this is older, you know, so I know it's coming and she's going to say $50 or something. And she said, well, how much do you want to pay for it? And I thought I'll give her a fair price, but a price that at the same time I can try this because I've never tried selling it. It might do better in some other market that's like European or something. I don't know. So I said 20 and we were rounding up like everything we we're going to buy would come to about 150 with that included. And she was like, yeah, 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 that's fine. Uh, so very happy to try and sell that. May get 60, 80, maybe 100. Some of them go for more than 100. I'm not familiar with the market enough. I don't know all of, you know, what's more exciting, what people really want. But um, exciting. And the last thing will be... Uh, this other thing she had, just excuse me for a moment, um, on one of her bureaus, and well, basically, I'll just give you an idea, and then I'll try and show you a detail, uh, was this lace uh, bed cover. So I just kind of grabbed that and I said, oh, that's, uh, that's nice. I said that it's a lace bed cover. And she said, oh, is that what it is? Um, so I said, well, how much are you asking for that? She again said, how much would you like to give? Another thing, which I've never sold. I know there's a certain market for that. And, and quite honestly, rightly so. It's so delicate and, and fun and you don't find them every day. Um, but they are usually, I've seen some sell for hundreds, uh, some of them less. So I really don't know what I'm doing here. Um, so I said, would you take 25? And she said, yeah, that's great. I, I think she was happy that we had bought a lot so far and you know, I felt good about that because, again, I have no idea. I could be stuck with this for a long time. Um, maybe I'll sell it for 50 bucks and only make 25, you know. It's, it's fine. But that's it. I just don't want to spend too much on something that I have no way of measuring what it's going to bring in. Let me just see for a second if I can show you. Yeah, I can. Let's see. This piece in particular shows a very nice motif, if I can get it kind of untangled from the rest so that you can see it better. Like in the middle, there's a sort of cartouche there. Um, some of the flowers are tinted as well. Um, they're kind of tinted like a pink and then green in some places for the leaves. It looks to be very finely made, I would assume by hand, but I do not know very much about it. I do have another one that's mine, actually, but I we haven't used it in years because I think that it's just for a double bed and we have a queen and such is the way. But um, so if 
any of this rings a bell and you know about Brighton belts or lace bed covers or anything, how it sells or any tricks of the trade, please let me know. Um, and other than that, we will try and wrap up another um, little video for you very soon. I hope you're having a great summer and that you're finding treasures and you're having fun picking. We'll talk to you very soon.